Yeah, we talked briefly at the Legacy Gala. You were there. We did. Yes, yes. Yeah. But please tell me what you're doing. Everything I read about you is so inspirational. It's global peace, and it seems like you're mm -hmm. really on a mission. You're taking this very seriously. Uh, well, it's... Uh I was inspired when I was a young child to uh, participate and um, hope, hopefully making a little little difference on the planet. But we've, I, I have an organization called Project Peace on Earth and we've done um, lots of different initiatives around the world, mostly a lot in the Middle East. Uh, we started with a global, uh, with a nationwide bus tour, uh, with a double-decker tour bus with the, had uh, Peace has begun on the uh, side, and we were interviewing people about uh, what they uh, they did on a daily basis to create a sense of inner peace, and um, what they um, believed their vision was for world peace, and uh, how music could act as a catalyst for world peace. Mm -hmm. So uh, we ran the bus from uh, the east to the west coast, and then several several of the big. Uh, Festivals here in Los a in the, in uh, California, and uh, music is a major driver of you know what you know what we're doing because if you look at every major spiritual text on the planet, beginning with the Upanishads, uh, it actually uh, is ten thousand years older than the Bible, and it mm -hmm. translates into the last song, and the Bhagavad Gita means a song celestial, and in the Bible, the word the word actually means primary harmony. The first bone to develop in the fetus is the ear bone. The first sense to develop in the fetus is hearing. Mm. The last sense to go when you die is hearing. Music is the only art form where the right and left hemispheres of the brain work simultaneously. NMIT has shown through PET scans that the pineal gland, what mystics might call the third eye, this is the area of the brain that processes music. So, so this is really all done through sound. And. Um, you know, I believe as uh, the great Sufi master Hazrat Tanaya Khan in the 14th century said that uh, people say that the soul on hearing the song of creation entered the body. But in reality, the soul itself was the song. Mm. And uh, he went on to say, there's no greater way to attain spiritual enlightenment and or awareness than through music, if only the music is rightly understood. So a lot of the work that we've done uh, deals with uh, the promotional music because this is the uh, this is the way consciousness operates and this is the way the universe operates according to the top quantum physicist on the planet. They say it all works through sound, and I believe if we get that sound correct, if we have um, musicians who are in essence coming from a prayerful and devotional state of co-creativity and and a performance where, in essence, they hold the prayer of, Oh, Father, Mother, God, let me be the space through which your divine grace will touch and transform the heart of humanity. Mm. And we reach, you know, several hundred million people with uh, this particular um, music, which I would call uh, Music of the Spheres. Uh, I spent 10 years writing a position paper on the effects of uh, music and consciousness through the uh, auspices of um, quantum physics and uh, sacred text and psychology and et cetera. And uh, I, had, I had an opportunity, I met Kitaro when he first landed in North America and I've met with many of these, these great musicians and we have 40 some odd major um, musicians on our you know, Project Peace on Earth uh, musical ambassador board.